Hi everyone, Dead Battery here and thank you for joining me on my channel. Today's video is going to be pretty awesome because I was able to get a hold of a very rare Sega Saturn. This one I didn't actually know a lot about and when I saw it pop up at my local store, I had to do a little research. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of information I don't know, so maybe somebody out there can help me with it. So a little bit of history about the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn was released on the 22nd of November in 1994 in Japan, May 11th, 1995 in North America, and July 8th in 1995 in Europe. It was part of the fifth generation console systems and it had a dual CPU and eight processors. So from what I could see, the Saturn was really popular in Japan and not as popular in North America. And from what I can tell, it had to do something with its May release. And that's because it was released four months ahead of schedule. And then in 1996, the Nintendo 64 was released and that kind of took precedence and the Saturn kind of dwindled. I have never owned a Sega Saturn before, however, I do happen to have one that wasn't working and I took it apart so I could look at the internals and I thought this was a good opportunity to also take apart this rare one just so we could compare motherboards since, as I mentioned, the Sega Saturn was known for its many processors. So let's reveal which Saturn I found, compare it to a regular Sega Saturn motherboard, and then let's play some games and see what they look like. Are you ready to see what kind of Saturn I have? I found a high Saturn. The only thing that I'm having issue with is I find a lot of information about the high Saturn, but the high Saturn Navi, which is not this one. There was a system put out called the high Saturn Navi and it would go inside your car. It had a screen navigation and it even had karaoke hookups. This one just looks like a basic Sega Saturn, except for the fact that it does say high Saturn on it and it's a Hitachi. And this I bought for 27,030 yen. And I don't remember how much it was during that conversion rate, but right now it roughly comes to about $188. Externally, it looks very clean. I don't see a lot of scratches. I don't see a lot of dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart. And I did have to switch screwdrivers. I don't know if this is a common issue that you all have, let me know in the comments, but I did not have a screwdriver bit that was long enough. I do own some screwdriver sets, a couple from iFixit, and nothing I had would reach this really deep screw. So I had to go find my husband's tools and steal one of his. There are five screws on the back. Two of them you could get to with a regular screwdriver. The others you're going to need a longer one. And all the screws are the same size, so you don't have to worry about putting the wrong one in. And there are no ribbons or cables attached to the top, so you don't need to worry about that when you're taking the top off. To get down to the motherboard, we're just gonna have to take off a few components. The first one being the power supply. And there is one screw holding it down to the motherboard and then two that connect it to the back of the shell. And then with a little bit of wiggle, it'll lift right off. And underneath there's a plastic piece that prevents it from touching the metal under. The disk drive is just sitting on top, but be careful, don't pull it off really quick. First take off that one cable, and then when you lift it, there is a screw. So just make sure you remove the screw, and then you can pull the ribbon off the side out, and it'll come right out. It looked really good. It did have a little bit of dust on it, so I'm probably going to clean it off. Once that's out, you can just take the rest of the screws out from the metal plate. Once again, they're all the same size, so you shouldn't have issue with putting them back into place. 
A big difference between the Sega Saturn and the Hitachi High Saturn I noticed right away was this Hitachi High Saturn card. I did look this up and apparently this is for MPEG movies. Once all the screws are out, this plate will lift off. Just be careful because you do want to get this cord and the ribbon through their holes. And as you can see, it is missing its CR2032 battery. So I'll definitely have to get one of those out or I'll constantly have to update the clock every time I turn it on. So here is a regular Sega Saturn board and right off the bat you can obviously tell the difference with where the Hitachi High Saturn card goes because the Sega Saturn does not have that and also the ribbon is smaller than in a regular Sega Saturn. Past that some of the chips look the same and some of them look different. Now I did look this up as I mentioned and the High Saturn came out in 1995 as well. So there probably wasn't a lot of difference between the chips and what they put into it. But if you know anything different, please let me know. Like I mentioned, there wasn't a lot of information I could find on this one, just on the High Saturn Navi one. Besides the capacitors being different as well, one has surface mount and the high Saturn has the ones with the little legs on it. And that seems to be a big difference between the capacitors, but why they went one way or the other, I don't know. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. I'm going to grab a brand new CR2032 and put it in its spot so that I don't have to change the clock every time and put the metal plate on. Just be careful and make sure you fit everything in where it needs to go. I can put the power button back in its place and put all the screws back. And now I can put the power board back in place Clean off the disk drive and then I can install that as well. Don't forget that screw that's at the bottom. Put the Hitachi high card in the back. Put the top part of the shell on, put all the screws in the back and now we can take it downstairs and give it a test. Here it is and because it didn't have a battery, obviously I have to redo the menu. And it's pretty cool once it turns on. As you can see here, it actually has a completely different start up and it does say High Saturn. This is what the main menu looks like. So we're going to test out some games and see how they look. The first one is Virtua Fighter. And apparently there's only two girls. However, for the Sega Saturn controller I have, apparently the back button doesn't work. So I can't go back and choose the other female, so I'm stuck choosing this female. I am terrible at fighting games. Hopefully if we get better controllers for this, my husband and myself can play and maybe I can kick his butt. Virtual Fighter Remix was the upgraded version of Virtual Fighter and it was released in 1995, just a couple months after the actual Sega Saturn release. This is definitely difficult with the controller kind of working and I thought I was going to lose, but in the end, I'm the winner. The second game we're going to put in, I don't really know too much about it. It looked like it had a lot of tarot cards on the front. I thought it looked really neat. This opening scene is absolutely beautiful and it looks amazing. It's called Textos Ludo Arcanum Senki. Don't judge me on the pronunciation. This is considered a 2D board game with RPG elements and you do play against other players. The next one is a racing game. 
called Grand Chaser. And I just picked the Time Race. Once again, this controller is not the best. I didn't take it apart to clean it. And as much as I'd like to say I'm bad at fighting games, I'm also really bad at racing games. I get too excited and I turn too much and I hit the side. But I wanted to at least finish this. I have never played this before. I was laughing the whole time I was playing this. This looks like a really awesome game and I'm excited to give this a try again and see if I can get a better score. Grand Chaser was the name in Japan. It was actually called Cyber Speedway in America. As many of you know, some of the most popular games for the Sega Saturn was Panzer Dragoon. And this is the first one. And basically you're riding the dragon through the air and you can move around to shoot all these creatures around you. This Panzer Dragoon was released in 1995. And along with Panzer Dragoon is Panzer Dragoon 2. And this one was a little different. You were on the ground and had to shoot stuff around you. And as much as the first one was fun, I kind of enjoyed this one a little bit more. Panzer Dragoon 2 Zwei, Z-W-E-I, was released in 1996. And this last one comes from one of my collections. If you didn't know, I'm a huge Atlas fan. I love all the Persona games as well as the Shin Megami Tensei games. And I try to collect them. It had two discs and a mini disc, which I believe is music. So this disc looked like you could save your demons on it. And then here are some of the other characters. This is the other disc, and this one actually looks like it is the part of the game. It looks really awesome, but because I haven't done enough research to figure out what's going on and my controller doesn't work that well, I think I'm just stuck at watching the beginning until I get more information. Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner is considered a role-playing game and it is part of the Megami Tensei franchise. This is the first one of the Devil Summoner series. So I'm glad the system works because it is a rare system, but I've yet to actually see another one of these in the wild. And let me know in the comments if you know the difference between this one that I have and the Hitachi High Saturn Navi. I do understand the differences navigation and karaoke, but I just don't understand why I can't find specifics about just this one. Maybe they were released together and one was just to be like a Sega Saturn and the other one was made for your car. If I ever find one that's the Navi, I may actually get it just because the screen that goes on it looks pretty cool. I have never owned a Sega Saturn as I mentioned, so I don't know a lot of the games either. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Sega Saturn game is and I'll definitely have a look at it. I am definitely going to hook this up to the rest of our retro side. So once I get controllers or figure out what's wrong with them, we'll be able to actually play. And hopefully in the future you'll be able to catch my husband, I'm sure I can, and myself playing games games on his YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had an exciting look at maybe a rare Saturn that not everybody knows about or that everybody sees. I think it's very interesting living here and that I keep finding systems that I would have never known about. So let me know in the comments if there's another rare Japanese system that you have been looking for or that you're interested in. And I'll see if I can hunt one down and or look up some interesting information about it. As always, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye.